So again, this morning, as mentioned earlier, we're looking at the process to God's promises. And there's a few things that I want to look at this morning in regards to Romans 5, verses 6 through 10, that share, again, what we can receive by um, submission of self as a process through here. Let me let me let me put this up here. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, points that we're looking at today. So point one is is reconciliation to God, right? Through the death, through acceptance, and that's the beginning in. In, in step one, we recognize our lives are insane. Uh, step two, we uh, recognize that there is someone greater than ourselves who is the creator of all things that can restore us to sanity. And then in step three, we what? We make a decision. So making a decision is definitely an important part of the process if we are to get beyond our old self. So our reconciliation to God. In other words, so we recognize that we have been separated by to, from God through our own decisions in life, right? Through sin. So step one is to accept that and seek God and accept then His path for our salvation through Christ Jesus. Step two is the daily forgiveness because uh, as we read and we will read again uh, that we are all sinners saved by grace that we all then continue uh, sometimes to come up short and give in to sin so we need daily forgiveness of our sins and step three is our father's continued presence wherever we go which points out the sin in our lives which then causes us to respond which is part of the process. So this portion of scripture is one that you're going to hear over the series. Second Peter 1, 3 and 4. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know Him, the one who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence, and because of His glory and excellence, He has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature. And what? Escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. We're able to, even on an individual basis, right? We're able to escape the world's corruption caused by our own human desires. So that's what we're going to be looking at over the weeks to come. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for Your Word. And I thank You, Father, for Your presence here with us, Lord. And I thank You, Father, for what You do in my life. And I thank You, Father, for what You do in each one of our lives. When we seek You, You give us everything that we need. Help us, Lord, to seek You in all that we do. And as we come to You now, Father, in this chapel with our eyes closed and our heads bowed and we're communing with You, our Creator, Lord, I pray that You speak clearly to us. I know You will. Clear any fog that might be in anybody's mind. Soften the hearts of those that are hardened. Help us, Lord, to hear completely what you would have for us today because we need it I need it we all do I thank you father for this opportunity to share your word in Jesus name I pray amen, amen. so the candy's got to go this is important information for us it's basic, it's clean, it's easy to understand. There's not a lot of thinking going on. All right? We have an opportunity to be spiritually wealthy. You know, we, we, 
I, I hear a lot about prosperity doctrines, right? Listen, there's nothing richer than having peace, serenity in one's life. There's nothing richer um, than being spiritually healthy. So when we're talking about wealth, right, we need to turn off what we know of the world. We have an opportunity to be spiritually wealthy because of the exceedingly, because of the exceedingly great promises we have in Jesus, our Savior. Again, and over the next six weeks, you're going to hear about this. Um, we will also be looking at the processes as well as the promises. So. Point number one for this morning is our reconciliation to God through the death of Christ. In Romans 5, 6, we were utterly helpless. We know that. Some of you still are because you're fighting. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at the right time and died for us sinners. This is now. This isn't then. This happened, maybe Christ went through this then, but this is now. This is for today. So I want to read this morning's scripture over to you. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of the Son while we were still in His, his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So even though we have to start somewhere, we have to recognize sin for what it is, we have to recognize our old sinful nature, we have to then desire to turn that over to God so that we might then be filled with God's will or seek God's will, at least maybe for the first time. It says that we come into a friendship with God that our friendship with God is restored by the death of His Son. So He will continue then to help us as we move forward. Right? It is a growth process, a learning experience. It's not a one-shot deal. It's until we take our last breath. The problem is that we get in the way. The main part of the process for us would be to let go of our old. <clears throat> there are roadblocks again, too, as we move forward in a place to get in the way of God's grace. We put restrictions, sadly, on God's love. And we may think that we're not lovable. We may think that we've gone too far. How can He love us? We put restrictions on God's wisdom. There's no way God's plan was meant for me. I heard that many times over that only certain people are meant to be. I can't do that. See, I can't take that. I don't know God's wisdom. I don't know God's plan. I see the whosoever as being just that. The whosoever that believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I don't get to make that distinction on who is who. God does. That's God's wisdom. There is no way God's plan was meant for me is the way I used to think. How could He sacrifice His Son for me? Again, I can't wrap my head around that. But I know it's true. I've experienced it myself. But there are processes that we must work through. Not just to for our initial, well, our initial salvation is a decision that we make. But not just for that, there's a process that we have to work through each day. And luckily, <laughs> thankfully, not luckily, but thankfully, 
God gives us what we need to work through it all. In Romans 5.8 it says, But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While we were still in a, a, an active addiction, while we were still participating in doing things that were opposite of that which God would have us to do, while we were actively participating in sin, Christ died for us. And it's up to us then to make a decision whether or not we're going to accept that as truth. But it's there for us. We need to know it. We will always be sinners to some extent. But when we give in to sin, we can still find forgiveness. And it always will be processed. So, we look at the daily forgiveness of our sins. Romans 5.9 and since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. So if we have been made right through our initial surrender of self and accepting Christ into our hearts as our personal Savior, then why do we need this reminder? He will save us from God's condemnation. Should we already be saved? after we've accepted Christ. There's going to be a process that we have to work through while we're still breathing. We're still going to give in to sin at times. We're going to need continued forgiveness for the things that we do. And again, as mentioned earlier, it depends on what's going on in here. If we are repentant, if we are sorrowful for the things that we've done, it's a lot different. That's the new nature that's a lot different from the old nature who could care less. <clears throat> Repeated forgiveness. This morning's call to worship was recurring sins. So this is titled Repeated Forgiveness for those recurring sins. We may grow impatient with ourselves when we continue to commit the same sins over and over again. This may cause us to get discouraged, or we may, be, we may be afraid that we are doomed to relapse. Peter asked Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. If this is to be our attitude towards others, doesn't it make sense that we should extend that same grace towards ourselves? We need to be as patient with ourselves as God expects us to be with others. Paul wrote, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they, are, they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength and strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. For we know how dearly God loves us because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. Learning to wait patiently is an important characteristic for us to develop. Each time we admit sin and accept God's forgiveness, our hope and faith has a chance to be exercised and grow stronger. We no longer have to hide in shame every time we slip. We can admit our wrongs and move on. Right? God's love for us is, a reaffir is reaffirmed every time we rely on it in this way. God helps us hold our head high no matter what happens. To know that God is there for us no matter what happens. And again, you got to listen, I got to go back to, to, to repeating this because it's important. It depends on what's going on in here. Do we actively participate in sin without a care? Or when we make a mistake, when we slip and fall and get back up, are we repentant? Are we sorrowful and mournful for the things that we've done? That's the difference between old and new nature. <clears throat> or, or worse, do we do we participate knowing, you know, because hey, look, God loves to forgive us. Oh, well, I might as well do it. He likes to forgive me. I'll do it. No. It even tells us in God's Word that that's 
crazy. That's part of the insanity. So, each day we come to him to confess our sins. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's a reason why the scripture is in God's word. It's because, again, it's a process. It's a growth learning process through life that we must maintain with God. Christ did not only come to forgive us our past sins, He's also there for us when we fall. It's a process. 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. My dear children, I'm writing this so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. For the whosoever that makes a decision to surrender themselves to God through Christ and accept Christ into their hearts as their personal Savior. <clears throat> It is through a maintained relationship with God through Christ Jesus that we can continue to move forward closer and closer as we grow in Him and He is always with us. So we're going to look at that, our third point, the Father's continued presence wherever we go. Romans 5.10 For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son while we were still His enemies, he will cert we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. Friendship. That's kind of crazy. I mean, it's not the only instance where God calls us His friends. That we are in a friendship with Him. Think about that. Now, I know in the past a lot of our friendships with others might have been more geared toward our own personal gain of what we could get out of that, right? Friendship. What, what can we get from this? And <laughs> strangely enough, uh, there is some truth in this friendship as well, but we have to look beyond taking we're good at takers. We're good at being takers. We have to be givers. We have to be in a maintained, back and forth, communal relationship with God. Participating in the friendship. He calls us friends. Do we call Him friend? Do we include Him in all that we do? This friendship is not like those that we've had with others because God is always present. Now, i got some old friends that were part of my life since I was a child, and they're still friends. I might see them maybe once every couple of years. They're still friends. But I also have a lot of people that I looked at as friends in the past that were just acquaintances or using me partners or buddies or whatever. God is always with us, always for us. Always guiding, always strengthening, always loving, always compassionate. Deuteronomy 31 8. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you, do not fear or be dismayed. He will not fail you or forsake you. Again, we can't look at God the same way as we look at others. We look at the world. We look at everything else, but only God is always 
God was always, is always, and will always be there for us. Hebrews 13, 5. <laughs> Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I have no fear. What can mere people do to me? In some cases, we have to look at it as what can mere people do for me? And again, God puts each other, right? God puts us each other in each other's lives for a reason. When we're in a maintained relationship with God, He's going to put other living, breathing people in our path to help us. But we have to make sure that first and foremost, we are looking to Him. Because God does not fail us nor forsake us like others. That's why I say you should never put somebody on a pedestal. You should never hold somebody up. Like, you know, I, I get the whole thing with with heroes, you know, with people having heroes that they look to and but man, every person breathing is foul. Only God is not. We need to make sure we're focusing on Him. So again, I want to read this to you because it will be something that we read over the weeks to come by His divine power. By His divine power. Not the power of someone else. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the One who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. He is the One that's calling you. And because of His glory and excellence, He has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you, listen, these are the promises that enable you to share in His divine nature. To come away from your old sinful nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Then, if there's ever a time we need to escape what's going on in the world, it's right now. We need to be above it. We can't feed into it. We need to be above it. And these, are the promise, these are the promises that enable you to share in His divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. What we're going to be looking at from God's Word are these promises. But we have to participate in the process and enjoy God's promises to enjoy God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You so much for Your Word. It's so important for us to be in it, <laughs> to read, to, to commune with You, to to say, Lord, please help me understand what these words mean for me. And then read through it, Lord, as we meditate upon Your Word, Father, so that You speak to us through Your Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray that You give us the courage to follow. Lord, You are calling us away from that old sinful nature. You've made it possible through Your Son, Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that each person in this room know this is true. We have such a long list of those that have left this program and I know that while they have been here, they have heard. And if they haven't yet, Lord, started to apply what they've heard from You, Lord, I pray that now is the time. But for those of us here, Lord, this morning, I pray that we don't put off we don't know when our last breath is. We've seen so many people take their last breath and we don't know whether or not they were reconciled with You through Christ, Lord. So we pray, Father, for each person here this morning that they understand the urgency. You have so many promises for us that are good. 
process has to start by making by us making a decision to accept your plan for our salvation through Christ Jesus. So I pray, Lord, as we think about our lives and we think about you, Lord, and you speak to us, Father, about the decisions we need to make, first and foremost, I pray that each person here knows you personally through your Son, Christ Jesus that they've admitted that they're sinners, they repent of their sin, and they ask for forgiveness through Christ Jesus, that they accept Christ into their hearts as their personal Savior, to put behind their old sinful nature, Lord, they die as Christ died on the cross. And I thank you, Lord, because we rise as Christ rose from our old self. Now we recognize sin for what it is and we don't want to continue to act out, out in it, Lord. And it hurts knowing the things that we do because we know they're against Your will for us. Lord, help us. As we think of those things this morning, Father, I pray that we let go. That we give them to You. We thank You, Lord, for pointing these things out. But Father, take them from us and give us the strength not to turn back. Thank you, Father, for all this. Through your Son, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.